The prosecution, led by advocates Kerry Null and Andrea Johnson, released a witness list last year, featuring a total of 107 names. The state's team has spent the past few months consulting with those witnesses who they intend calling during the trial. This list has been whittled down considerably, and many of those named won't actually have to take the stand. As in most murder trials, the case will likely be structured around the evidence of the investigating officer, Captain Mike van Aert, a seasoned detective with a speciality in cracking serial killers. He took over the case from Hilton Boerter, the initial investigating officer, after it emerged during the bail application that he too was facing criminal charges. Boerter's name is on the witness list but it's unclear whether he will be brought back to testify. There is a litany of other police officers named as witnesses, and forensics experts, including ballistics, blood spatter and fingerprint specialists. Brigadier Gerard Labuskachny, who heads the police's investigative psychology unit, is named. So too is expert forensic specialist Lieutenant Colonel Ian van der Nest. Both men have testified in numerous high-profile cases in the past. Professor Gert Simon from the Medico Legal Laboratory will be fundamental to the state's case. He conducted the autopsy on Riva Stienkamp's body and will reveal his findings in his post mortem report. A crucial pillar of the state's case will be the testimony of neighbours. There are a number of residents of the Silverwoods Country Estate who are listed, as well as those from the adjacent Silver Stream Estate. They will testify about whether the lights in the athlete's house were on whether they heard screaming or arguing prior to the shooting and previous incidents that may have been reported. The evidence of the Silverwoods estate manager, Johann Stander, who was the first person the Blade Runner claims he called after the incident, will be important as he actually saw Pistorius carrying Steenkamp downstairs. Friends, family members, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends and acquaintances of Pistorius and Steenkamp are also listed as witnesses by the prosecution. One of Stienkamp's closest friends, Samantha Gravenstein, and her boyfriend, Daytona Group CEO Justin Devaris, feature. They rushed through to the Olympian's house after receiving a desperate call from him and spent the morning at the scene. The state could then call a series of witnesses to testify about Pistorius' volatile temper, his keen interest in weapons, and additional charges he's facing relating to the reckless and negligent discharge of a firearm. Ex-soccer player and super sport commentator Mark Batchelor could testify about how Pistorius threatened to break his legs at the Kyle Army racetrack in 2012. Professional boxer Kevin Lorena and mutual friend Darren Fresco are expected to give evidence about an incident at Tasha's restaurant at Melrose Arch in January 2013 when Pistorius accidentally fired off Fresco's gun. Fresco can also testify about a separate incident in September 2012 when the athlete discharged a weapon out the sunroof of a BMW. Pistorius' ex-girlfriend, Samantha Taylor, was in the car at the time and has also been listed as a witness. Steenkamp's ex-boyfriend, Warren LaHood, whom she dated for five years, could be called to tell the court how Pistorius had phoned the model twice during a coffee catch-up two days before her death. Another of her ex-boyfriends, star rugby player Francois Hogart, is not on the list despite unfounded media speculation that a message from him to Steenkamp could have triggered a fight on the night of her death. Steenkamp's so-called adopted family, the Myers, are on the witness list, including Cecil, Desi, Gina and Kim. Gina can testify at length about several explosive arguments between the couple and concerns she had about the athlete's temper and the intensity of their relationship. Pistorius' family members could also be asked to testify for the state against him. His father, Henker, and sister, Ami, are on the list. So, too, is his uncle, Arnold. But with the state unlikely to call all 107 witnesses during this high-profile trial, those who are not used will be handed over to the defence team for consultations. Pistorius' lawyers will only have to disclose their list of witnesses once the state has closed its case. The big question, then, will be, will Oscar Pistorius take the stand in his own defence and face the possibility of cross-examination. Mandy Wiener, Eyewitness News.